Okay, let's see if I can get this video going. Um, since my last video was an hour long and took forever to load up and deal with a lot of stuff, I'm decided let's go with something really short. Uh, Ganshan Clever. Uh, great roll and write. I have had the board game or the, the roll and write game for years, and I've since I've got my new PC, I can now play the digital app as well. Uh, fun little game. Uh, I'll briefly go over the rules for those of you who don't know it, how it's played. Since I'm playing in solo, uh, I'm going to play six rounds. Uh, there are six dice. I will be rolling all six dice. I will score one of the dice and place it on my little spot here. I will roll the, the remaining dice that are eligible to. I will take one die. I will score the die. I will then roll the dice that are still on the board. I will score one of those dice. Put it on here. The rest go on the platter for the other players to use. But since I'm in solo mode, they just go on here. Uh, it's as simple as that. There's, there's a yellow die. There's a blue die. There's a green die. There's an orange die. And there's a purple die. As well as a white die, which acts as wild. The dice are just normal die sixes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and here's how they score. Uh, orange dice are the easiest ones to explain. Uh, whatever value the orange dice is, that can be placed in its space from left to right. And whatever the number on the dice is, on the die is, uh, that's what you put in here. So at the most you're going to get is six points in any one of these little spaces, in theory. Uh, orange is the easiest one to explain because it's just flat out. You, you know, if orange is available to you, you can always score orange. That's a key rule. Uh, now let's go over how the other dice are scored. Uh, purple. We'll go to purple next. Purple also scores like orange. It's going to score face value. But there's a uh, prerequisite for this one. Purple can only... You can only score your purple if it's higher than the last scored purple. So I can put any number in this first spot. But the next number in a row has to, has to be higher in value and so forth and so forth and so forth until you get up to a six. Once you put a six on the board, then it basically resets. The only number that can be placed after a six, but the only number that can be placed after itself is a six. Um, if you put a one here, then you have to place a two through six in the next space. If I put a six here, then I can put a one through six in the next space. So ideally, your best score in purple is going to be just a tons, ton of sixes. You want to score fives and sixes in purple. You want to score fives and sixes in orange. You don't want to have to score ones and twos. They're not worth as many points. And since we're down here, let's go over green. The green die scores is different. It, you're not scoring the face value of the die that you roll. You just have to meet a qualifier. Uh, in order to get this first position, basically any number works. Any number that's one or greater, you can put in the first spot, and it crosses it off. It's just an X. You need a two or a greater to get this space. You need a three or greater, five, four or greater, five or greater, and then it resets. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, and the only one that need, uh, has to be a six is this last space. You're not scoring the numbers, though. All you're putting is Xs. You're going to score the little starburst, however far you get by the end of the game. So as you can see, it, it, it goes up kind of triangular. 1 point, 3 point, 6, 10, 15, 21, 28. So it gets really high scoring if you can manage to get to the end of the row. I've probably only gotten to the end of the row once ever. and I don't even know if, that's, if I've done that. So that explains the green die, the orange die, and the purple die. Now to explain the white and blue, or yellow and blue. Uh, yellow will you will score the face value of the die. Um, it's a one through a six. If you look at the yellow field up here, there are two ones, there are two twos, there are two threes, and so forth, up until you get two sixes. That's how you cro you'll basically cross off the number. Your score though is going to be based on completed column. Once you have completed the first column, the lowest valued column, you'll get 10 points. When you complete the second column, you'll get 14 points. And you don't have to do these in order. It's possible the only one you're going to score in the whole game is the fourth column, and that'll get you 20 points. That's how yellow scores. You get two chances. Once, Let's say I've already crossed off the 1-1, one, one, and, and later in the game I, I score another one. From that point on, a one value in yellow I can't use. It's a dead die to me, or at least if it comes up as a 1. 
That's how you score yellow. Blue. Blue is always the combination of what the blue die is plus whatever the white die is when you score it. You can use either die to score blue, but the value is always whatever the face-up value is for blue and white put together. So that gives you a 2 die 6, so your numbers are going to go from 2 to 12. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That isn't what you're scoring. This is just like yellow, this is just crossing them off. Similar to green, the more of these you cross off, the higher the points are. So this is, if you manage to score, cross off all 11 of them, you're going to score 56 points. If you only score, cross off five of them, it's only worth 11 points. So that's how blue is going to score you in the end. Um, similar to yellow, though, there's a limited chance to get these. Uh, for instance, in order for, to, for you to score the two, you need a one on the blue die and the one on the white die at the same time. That doesn't happen very often. It's a low percentage chance. Likewise, getting two sixes is a very low percentage chance. So in general, it's very hard to score a 2 and a 3 or an 11 or a 12 because they're just not going to happen very often. And your 6s, your 7s, your 8s, these are going to happen a lot more frequently. Now, if it was just about scoring the different numbers, it wouldn't be much of a game. I mean, it's sort of a game, but it's not much of a game. That's where all these other things come into play. In order, in addition to just scoring points, and in Orange's case, if you reach a certain level, if you put a 6 in this space, you actually are doubling it. It's going to be worth a 12. Same here, same here, and if you manage to get to the end, that's a triple score sp space. In addition to that, though, you'll see that there's these little symbols that are aligned with different squares, different rows, and different rows and columns, in the case of blue. Starting off with yellow, when you manage to cross off the 3, the 6, and the 5 in that top row, it gives you this reward, a free X in blue. If you cross off this row, you're going to get a score of 4 in your orange. When you get this row, you're going to get an X in green. If you get this diagonal, you're going to get a plus 1. I'll go over what these things are in a second. Uh, likewise, for blue, you're going to score things if you complete a row. You're also going to score get, get things if you score a column. In the case of orange, uh, orange, green, and purple, it's just about what whenever you cross off or get a six or a number, uh, a number or a cross off in one of the spaces that has a little symbol, you get that reward. So it's very possible that when you complete this this, this top row in blue, you'll put an X in blue. And that X in blue might give you an X in green, as well as a 5 in purple, or 5 in orange. And that 5 in orange might be in this space, which gives you an X in yellow. And then you put an X in yellow, and that maybe that completes your row of green. And it can daisy chain like that. That's the kind of the fun part of this game is when you get a daisy chain a bunch of points. Yes, it does not happen very often. You'll be lucky if you get one thing to trigger into another. But that's kind of a fun thing to do. There are three other things, though, besides getting an X or a 6 or a 5 or a 4. Um, there's the little re-roll symbol. You're going to get so many re-rolls. That's only when it's your turn. You'll get a chance to re-roll the dice until you basically get them the way you want them. But every time you have to use one of your, your re-rolls. Or a plus 1. A plus 1, at the end of the turn, when, everybody is, when the player who's active scores all three of his dice... Um, if anybody has a plus one, they can choose to take a second die from the entire array, both the ones that were scored by the player and the ones that are left over on the dish or on the plate. Um, and as long as you have additional plus ones, you can play more and more and more. But any die that you use for a plus one is done for the round for you. You can't continue to use the same die over and over as long as you have plus ones. So you can you get your one placement. Then you can use a plus one using any of the dice. And additional plus ones that you choose to use that turn, you can use any of the remaining dice that you haven't already used for a plus one. So, other little benefits. We're going to start off the game, everybody has a free re-roll. And this, when the second round starts, everybody's going to get a free plus one. The third round, you're going to get another free re-roll. On the fourth round, you're either going to get, you can place an X or a six anywhere on your board. The fifth and sixth rounds don't have any benefits, and you don't even play these rounds unless you have a lower player count. 
Um, in a three-player game or a four-player four game or more, you only play four rounds. In a three-player game, you go out to five, and in a six-player game, you go or a six one or two-player game, you go out to round six. And these are really balanced. Um, <coughs> it's going to give you the same amount of scoring opportunities because this is a game where when you're the active player, you're basically getting three scores. When you're the inactive player, in other words, you're not the person rolling the dice, you're going to get one scoring opportunity. So if you add up all of your chances to get three and your chances to get one, these are very balanced between playing four-player, three-player, two-player, and one-player. So let's just quickly go through this game. We've already gone through ten minutes, explained how the game works. It'll make more sense when you actually see it played. So, this is my initial roll. I got a one. That can easily get my one point there, get that out of the way. I can put a one in purple, which is not very good. You want high numbers in purple. Here's the trick, though. If I choose to play a higher value number, if I want to score this two in yellow, I will only get the higher or equal or higher dice to roll on my next roll. The one and the, the, the two ones would have to go on the tray, and they're no longer available to me. So on the first round and the second round, you're probably going to end up scoring the lowest valued ones on the plate. You're not going to grab a six in the first round because then you wouldn't have any more plays left. A one in the opening round is fantastic because any number can score this. It might as well be a one. Boom. Second round. I still don't want to use this one. And a three and an orange isn't great either. Now, I want to give myself the best option on the last roll. So I'm going to go ahead and use one of my re-rolls to re-roll this. And hopefully, my purple die won't be in that low position. Okay. Not great, but it'll work. If I want to score a blue, remember, it's the combination of the blue and the white die, which is a six. So two and a six is eight, so that's where it would score. Eight's a pretty highly common die. It's not a bad place to put it. But the two in yellow, I like to go for yellow early. I like to get this diagonal set up so I get a freebie whenever I get a chance. So I'm going to go ahead and place the two there. Now, on the last roll, you're probably going to take the highest, whatever gets you the most points. This is not good, because a three it being the highest of value I rolled is not real good. But this is a great roll. A one and a two can get me a three, which is a very hard die to roll for blue. So I'm going to go ahead and take that. My roll is done. Now I'm going to hit next the robot player rolls the dice. Now, they're not actually scoring anything, but they, they're they basically taking the highest value dice off the tray and leaving me with the low value stuff. That's basically the way the automatic player works. So on my non-turn, I'm going to get the choice for these three dice. And it's always going to be three dice. So I can either play a two in orange, which is bad. I can play a four in blue, which isn't too bad. Or, because I, this is a wild, I can place this two anywhere. And I'm going to do that, and I'm going to go ahead and take the two in green. Next round, when I start the second Woo round, I get a plus one. So now I have a plus one in my bank. Go ahead and roll the dice. <laughs> Why do I keep getting these ones in orange? This is horrible. <sighs> a nine is not good either. I'm going to have to take that. It's, it's a bad score, but it is what it is. Again, I got a four here. That's not horrible. Or I could place a one there, which isn't bad either. But I think this time I'm going to play here. And here's why. There's a chance that I could roll this blue in my last round and roll a one, in which case I'd be able to cross that off and get a five in orange, which would be fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and take that. Didn't get it. So I can get a two in yellow. I can score my three in green. I can't score the four because I crossed it off, so blue's dead. Or I could put a three in purple. Well, i got to start getting into purple eventually, but right now the three is looking good, so I'm going to go ahead and take that. Now, now this is the first round where I've had a plus one available. Now, if I want, I can expend this plus one to take one of these glorious dice and score it, which right now doesn't get me much, so I'm going to skip that. But if I had, if this is my opponent's turn and they have a six up here, a white six, is fantastic because that means you can put a six anywhere on the board see there's an orange six which is a great die but i don't have access to that this is the robot player's dice he took away from me can't score the one that's what that means i can't score it i need a four or more two in yellow or i can score a four anywhere which gives me lots of flexibility 
I'm going to go ahead and use the four here and give me my plus one. I'm really banking on green this game, I guess. But because I know I have that six, and right now my orange sucks, I'm going to place a six in orange. I could take a five as well, but it doesn't really get me a whole lot, so I'm going to go ahead and pass the turn. My turn. We got a free reroll, round three. Oh, two's nothing. Three is good, but it'll kill my gorn. But you know what? My green is really good shape right now, so I'm not going to worry about that. I could score with that, though. Save my yellow. Take a chance I might get two yellows this turn. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. That's a horrible die. And that's not good either. I'm going to re-roll this. Do I have a, like, a, is this die weighted? How many ones am I going to roll in orange this game? You know what? I'm going to take the eight because I know I'm going to get a free X there. And a six in yellow. Plus one. I could do another six in yellow. I could do a three anywhere. I've really got to get some stuff in purple, though. Oh, it's so tempting to do it, but I'm not going to. I'm going to go ahead and push. One in purple. I can't score that. I could get my two out of the way. I could get a six, but that's a pretty easy one. I'm, you know what? I'm going to... I'm just going to put a 2 in purple because i got to get some points in purple. Uh, I should point out, at the end of the game, you will add up your points in yellow, your points in blue, your points in green, your points in orange, and your points in red. I didn't mention the red foxes. This is a game about being clever. That's pretty clever. Gan Shun Clever. And their symbol is the clever fox. At the end of the game, in addition to the five colors that are on the, on the board, you're also going to score red. Red will score whatever your lowest scoring color is multiplied by the number of foxes you've unlocked. In order to get this fox, you need to get the bottom row. This one, the bottom row. you got to get to this level, this level, and this level to unlock those three. And that's a multiplier. So a good score is probably going to need three foxes. If you get less than two or fewer foxes, probably means you're not going to have a good score. A good score, a great score in this game is getting 300 points or more. If you can get over 300 points, good on you. I managed to get a 300 score on my fourth or fifth game of this, and I don't think I've gotten one since, and I have over 100 games of this played since then. High 200s are great. Anywhere in the 200s is considered a good game, but a high 200s, that is 270, 280, 290, those are really good scores. A hundred something points is not a good score. It's kind of a lousy score, actually. And if you don't even get a hundred points, then you weren't even trying to get score. You probably did something wrong. Uh, but anyway, that's that's an additional thing that scores at the end of the game. Um, where was I at? Oh yeah, going next. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and skip as much as I can. That's six. All right. So, before round four rolls, you get to place an X anywhere on the board or a six in one of these two spaces. <sighs> so, uh, either one of these is going to get me something good. I can either take the one here and gives me a plus one, or I can score the 12 here, which gets me a plus one. But as I said before, getting two sixes is very hard in this game. So, I'm going to go ahead and get that. So, now I have two plus ones waiting for me. Roll the dice. There's a 7, that's good. That's a good way to get rid of a 1, and it keeps my 1 open for that, so that's a good one to keep. Almost, almost, almost. Okay, a 2 in yellow, I can work with that. Oof, I was hoping to get a 1. Um, let's see, we got a 3, a 3 orange, a 3 purple, or a 5 green. Yes, because that resets my green. Now, do I want to do some plus ones? Yes, I do. But where? Where indeed? I think I'm going to score... I want to get this X in blue. 
Now, would I rather have a five in orange where I'm weak, or a six in purple where I'm even weaker? Six in purple it is. So right now I'm only scoring eight points in purple, and I'm only scoring seven points in orange. That's really not good. Uh, the rest of these aren't good for me, I don't think, so I'm going to go ahead and pass the turn. Hey, there's my two. Sweet! Woohoo! Woohoo! That gets me a five in orange. Okay, now we're talking. See how things kind of flesh out once you uh, get up here? Here's another one that's a, kind of a crux I don't like to do. I, I don't like to use a plus one to get a plus one. It's not... It's What's it getting you? Nothing. It's basically just burning it to get one. Um... You want to get these as freebies. You want to get these as, a, as an actual die placement or as a yellow, you know, I complete this row and put an X here because that gives me a plus one. You don't want to have to spend a plus one to get a plus one because it's just, it's, I don't know. Strategically, I just don't think it's a sound move. So do I want to use a plus one. A three in yellow isn't great. A three in orange would get me six points. A two in purple gets me a re-roll, but anything in purple gets me a re-roll. I uh, can't score blue, and a two in... Oh, two... Ah, probably isn't worth it. Next round. Nice. Well, it looks like I am going to take the three after all. I can place a two anywhere. I'll go ahead and get a fox. I may not... I, it's possible I won't put anything else in green the rest of the game. Because of the, uh, the point situation here in orange and purple is not good. I also don't have any points in yellow, by the way. I haven't completed a single column yet. That's really, really bad. I need to, I only have so many opportunities left. Um, I'm kind of keeping an eye on the clock here. Um, I'm going to take the five, put it there. And then a six in green isn't good. That's either six points in orange... I can't place that. A two anywhere, which isn't really helpful, and I can't place the five in purple, so I guess I gotta push. Can't place the one. Can't place the two. I guess that forces me to play the six. Now, do I want to use a plus one? Yes. And here's why. A six in orange gets me 12 points. But now I'm out of plus ones. I do have a bunch of re-rolls. Okay, this is my last chance to roll dice. I got three more rolls, basically. So I, if I'm going to use my re-rolls, I need to use them now. So basically, I don't want to put any die down unless it's definitely going to get me something. That's nothing. That's nothing. That basically gets me an X in yellow, which isn't bad. But it would lock my blue into being a combination with a 2, which isn't great. That means that I can't score a 9 or a 10 with a 2. Because um, a 6 and a 2 is an 8. The only thing I could score would be a, getting a 3. That's not bad, though. That's that's not that's not bad. I think I will do this. Mainly because I'm not scoring anything here, and it's really dangerous. But maybe I should take the plus 1 instead because then I'd have another opportunity to take an extra die. I think I will do that, because yellow's still on the table. I could still roll a one. Okay, that doesn't score me anything. That does, but anything scores here. I, I'm going to change, I'm just going to re-roll this. This isn't good. Can't use it. Can't use it. Re-roll it. That will, that'll work. That'll work. We'll put a one there. At least I'm getting 10 points. That's a yuck. That's a yuck. That gets me some more points. You notice the point jump goes from 28 to 36 if I get there. I can't score the 5 in purple, though. I don't have a re-roll. A 1 gets me a plus 1, but any orange I score can get me that. Uh, what's more important, the extra points or the extra re-roll? I'm going to take the re-roll. Maybe I'll hit the double up. I have some plus ones. This is horrible for a plus one situation. 
So here's my deal. I have two plus ones left. I get two more free pulls off of the whole board. Um, do I want to save them for my opponent's last roll and take a chance? If they roll badly, then I may not even get to use them. If I do, then I'll get three dice off of his roll. Or I can use them now. Well, here's the thing. The five will only get me those extra points. I can't use the five in purple. I can't use the, the blue. The two anywhere doesn't get me anything in yellow. I can't use it in green. It only gets me four points in orange. I can't use it in purple. These, these are horrible numbers. I can't use the one. I can't do it. I'm going to have to push. So this is the last roll. The last roll of the game is right now. Wow. That's absolute garbage. Can't use it. Can't use it. Can't use it. Now, if the player, the active player, cannot use any of the dice on the tray, he gets a chance to use any of the dice. So this is actually good for me. I'm going to get 10 points out of that. Now I got two plus ones coming to me. Of course, still can't use any of those, so that sucks. The only two I can score is that one and that one. So I can get a two here and then a ten points. I guess that's what I'm going to do because I can't do anything else. Two. And ten. So I'm going to have a really good orange score, but my yellow score sucks. Ten points. Yeah, my purple score sucks. This is not going to be a very high-scoring game, folks. 149. That's pretty lousy for me. Yeah, I only scored 10 points in yellow. I scored 20. In, uh, basically, if you get over 20 into the 30s is good. But uh, your, your usual a bad game is having one score in the 20s. I got two in the teens, folks. <laughs> and my fox score, I only had two foxes. So 2 times 10 is 20 lousy points. That is a horrible fox score. So, yeah, this is really, really bad for me. Yeah, 49 in orange is fantastic, but look at what it comes at the cost of all these other ones. This is a bad score, for me anyway. Yeah, see, my high score in the 16 times I've played since I got this game a week ago is 294. That was a fantastic score. Oof. That's a really bad score for me. But anyway, that's Ganshan Clever, or uh, that's pretty clever, if you use the English title, by Wolfgang Varsh. Uh, fantastic game. Uh, you can get this in stores, uh, at least in game shops, and you can probably find it at Barnes & Noble. Um, I've seen it there before. Um, there's also Doppelt's uh, a Clever, um, which is twice as clever. And there's a third one as well, which his name eludes me at the time. Um, but yeah, there are additional games from Schmitzbiel and in the, uh, I don't remember what the American distributor is, but anyway, that's my game. We're at the 28 minute mark. So, uh, thanks for watching.